A man has been indicted for a Clark County crash that killed two women. Hear from the suspect from jail just ahead on WKYT at noon. A man and his pregnant girlfriend are forced from their home in an early morning house fire here in Powell County. Coming up, I'll tell you the biggest issues firefighters dealt with when putting out the flames. It looks awesome out there right now, but let me tell you this, the look is not going to change the next few days. It's the feel that will change. We're talking about possible record-breaking temperatures on Halloween Day. We'll go over that coming up. This is WQYT News at Noon. Good afternoon and welcome to WKYT News at Noon. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Boy, things are going to be warming up just in time for this Halloween. And it is going to be busy. Lots of things going on. Looks like a wonderful weekend. It's going to be beautiful. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris. He is live in our First Alert Weather Center with these nice details. Yeah, we're in the upper 50s, lower 60s at this moment. It feels really good outside. It's really not all that bad. Still slightly they're on the cool side of things, but all in all, this is a really good looking day. Nice feeling day, and as we spoke about the past few days, that today is going to be right there in the mid 60s when we're all said and done. And then we slowly but surely make our way northbound. Let's talk about the next 24 hours. Here's the breakdown of it. So we get toward 1 p.m., still roughly around 60 degrees, 67 for an afternoon high, which is above average, average being in the low 60s. Then we head off into the evening, Friday night football. I see no problems whatsoever. It's one of those, just a light coat, maybe one of those uh, sweaters or whatever it may be. Take that along with you because you'll probably need that off into the night and into tomorrow morning. Some 5Ks going on. 11 a.m. tomorrow, I'll actually be emceeing an event. It's the Walk for Down Syndrome downtown at Heritage Hall. We'd love to see you out there. I mean, two to 3,000 people were there last year. That broke the record from the year before. So a lot of people show up for that, so don't forget about that. Uh, downtown will be packed. We have a lot of events going on. Through the day, we're still right there in the lower 70s with a lot of sunshine. So things are looking really good during the morning hours and toward the afternoon. And I want you to see this, kind of the comparison of it. At 1 p.m. today, we'll be at 61. At 1 p.m. tomorrow, we'll be at 71. Yeah, it's really going on up the next 24 to 48 hours. And look at your weekend forecast. Saturday, we're looking at 78 degrees for a high. Could be roughly 80 degrees in a couple of spots, guys. We're going to talk about how long we hold on to these 70s. Does it take you all the way into Halloween? We'll have that coming up in a few minutes. And we'll see you shortly, and let's get to the news here at midday. New on WKYT News at noon, an elderly man has been indicted for a Clark County crash that killed two women. 84-year-old James Pelfrey faces two counts of manslaughter and a single count of assault. The crash happened back in June. Pelfrey has just now been arrested. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner explains why in our top story at noon. Caitlin? Police tell me there had always been an opportunity for charges to come in this case, but for 84 year old James Palfrey, being arrested was shocking. He tells me police had told him up until now that it was all just an accident. The deadly crash happened back in early June along the Winchester bypass at its intersection with Colby Road. Originally, witnesses had told police they thought two drivers were drag racing. However, according to Winchester police, the elderly man was blinded by bright lights and crashed into two cars waiting at a red light. Two women in the same car died, 62-year-old Sarah Helfrich and 35-year-old Juanetta Mitchell. A grand jury returned with an indictment for Pelfrey. He faces two counts of second-degree manslaughter and one count of second-degree assault. The decision comes after police turned over vehicle data and reconstruction findings, according to the Winchester police chief. I treasure life, and I'm sorry every night and pray every night for the people that lost their lives in the accident. I can't say any more than that. Pelfrey was arrested just last night, and he's here in jail at the Clark County Detention Center in Winchester. Caitlin Setner, WKYT. All right, Caitlin, thank you. And court dates have not yet been set for Pelfrey. A young couple lost everything in a huge fire this morning in Powell County. The fire started about 5 o'clock this morning at a home on 5th Street. It's 5th Avenue there in Clay City. A viewer sent us this eyewitness picture of those intense flames. WKYT's Mike Byer talked to the victim's family about their tremendous loss. I'm told by family members that a man and his pregnant girlfriend were inside the home when the fire started. Fortunately, they made it out safely. 
Now, the couple didn't want to go on camera, but they tell me they lost everything in the fire. The fire started around 5 this morning at a house on 5th Avenue in Clay City. First responders tell us the flames were nearly 30 feet high when they arrived on scene. The flames were so large that the heat from them damaged a neighboring home. Firefighters say the homeowner was renting out the home to a man and his pregnant girlfriend who were inside at the time, but managed to escape uninjured. Now, one of the biggest problems in battling this fire was staffing. Because of that, firefighters from Winchester and Mount Sterling were called in to help. Everybody was at their main jobs or, or didn't hear the call come out this morning. Four volunteers showed up this morning for the structure fire, and uh, they didn't have enough manpower to help put it out, so we had to call the surrounding counties to come out and help put it out. Now, firefighters are not sure what caused the fire or where it started, but they do say it appears to be accidental. In Powell County, Mike Byer, WKYT. And family members tell us the couple has turned to the American Red Cross for help. We now know the name of a man who was shot in the face in Lexington. The shooting happened just before 6 this morning at an apartment on Keys Road off Russell Cave Road. Police say Houston Adams has serious but non life threatening injuries. Investigators say they found him behind Save a Lot on North Broadway after following a trail of blood. One person is in the hospital, another in jail following an overnight crash in Lexington. It happened around 1.30 this morning on Cambridge Drive. Investigators say the driver was under the influence when the car flipped. We're told that one passenger was taken to the hospital with a minor head injury. Police say a second passenger ran away from the scene. A man is accused of trying to pass fake $100 bills in Whitley County. Roy Wells is charged with two counts of forgery. Deputies say he tried passing fake bills at a bank and at a gas station in Corbin. This is the second counterfeit cash case in Whitley County this month. Deputies say the fake bills Wells used have a vertical ribbon on them, but in the other case, the bills did not have that ribbon. The second of two inmates who escaped from the Knox County Detention Center is now back behind bars. Jail officials say deputies returned John Gray back to jail early this morning. Gray and Tommy Witt escaped a week ago today while working to unload a food truck. Witt has already turned himself in. One of the suspects charged in connection with the death of 15-year-old Trinity Gay will go before a Fayette County judge this afternoon. But this time, Devontae Middlebrook's hearing is in connection with another case. WKYT's Lauren Miner has more on what we can expect today in court. Lauren? Middlebrooks will appear here inside district court for the second time this week. He will go in front of a judge this afternoon for a probation hearing. He was convicted twice in 2015 for trafficking cocaine along with other drug charges. Both convictions were in Fayette County. Middlebrooks also appeared in court Monday for the shooting death of 15 year old Trinity Gay. He is being charged with wanton endangerment and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon in the case. According to Middlebrook's arrest citation, investigators determined that Middlebrook's was in the parking lot and fired multiple shots at the time of the incident. The judge continued the case against Middlebrook's to November 15th because he just retained a defense attorney earlier this week. Reporting in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Now, Middlebrooks will appear in court at 1 o'clock today. We'll be inside the courtroom and bring you up to date on the case throughout the afternoon right here on WKYT and WKYT.com. There have been more than 20 homicides in Lexington so far this year, and the high profile murders of 15 year old Trinity Gay and Mariah Coleman have sparked concern about public safety. This morning, city officials and the heads of law enforcement gathered in Lexington to have a candid discussion about what the city is doing to ensure a safe for environment. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain was at that discussion and she's going to tell us more about that. A report is coming up at 12:30 a few minutes from now. The NTSB is taking over the investigation into what caused a charter plane carrying Republican vice presidential candidate Mike Pence to overshoot a New York City runway. As Brooks of Obraga reports from LaGuardia Airport, everyone did manage to get off safely. Planes are once again taking off from both runways at New York's LaGuardia Airport after a jet carrying Republican vice presidential nominee Mike Pence slid off one of them last night. The 737 made a rough landing in heavy rain just before 8 p.m., skidding into the concrete arrestor beds that are designed to stop speeding planes. We have a 
emergency in the airport. They said that 3452, we're getting help for you. Pence described the anxious moments on CBS this morning. So it was about 10 seconds of uncertainty. Once we were on the ground, uh, you could tell they were trying to break, stop the aircraft as quickly as possible. It slid back and forth a little bit, then left the runway, but all are well. The plane stopped just a few hundred feet from that fence and this service road a few hundred feet farther, a busy New York City parkway. The 48 people aboard, including Pence, Secret Service agents, crew, and journalists, exited through the rear of the plane. Once the plane came to a stop, we noticed that there was mud uh, on the windows on our front half of the plane, and we smelled the burn rubber. I'm so grateful to the first responders. They were virtually on the scene before the plane has stopped rolling. Grateful to the pilots, everyone involved, and we're back on the campaign trail today. The trail takes Pence to a rally outside Philadelphia this afternoon, then on to North Carolina this evening. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, Queens, New York. And Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton tweeted that she is glad to hear that everyone on board was okay. On the campaign trail, Donald Trump is seizing emails showing that Bill Clinton's aide, Doug Band, urged the Clinton Foundation donors to offer President Clinton paid speeches. Band also says he arranged more than $50 million in for profit activity for the former president. The Clinton campaign will not confirm the email's authenticity. Hillary Clinton ignored the issue during a rally with First Lady Michelle Obama yesterday. She also is making plans for after she wins, if that happens. Uh, campaign sources confirming today that Vice President Joe Biden is atop the list to be Clinton's Secretary of State should she be successful in the campaign. Now we have some surveillance video of the moments just before an SUV crashed into three kids in Louisville. We'll show you that coming up on WKYT News at Noon, Kentucky's number one midday news. Welcome back to WKYT. As our news continues and new at noon, we have some surveillance video showing the moments just before an SUV hit three children who were waiting at a Louisville bus stop. Now, this video from inside the empty school bus shows the driver swerved to avoid the bus. After swerving, the SUV went up on the sidewalk where it hit the children. All three students were taken to the hospital. This week, one of those children was released and returned to school. However, the other two children who are siblings are still in the hospital. Police say the driver of the SUV did not have insurance or proper registration. Police in northern Kentucky are investigating after a man was found shot to death in a car. The discovery was made this morning. Police say the victim was shot in the chest. No other information about the investigation has been released. A committee formed by Democrats to investigate Republican Governor Matt Bevin is meeting today, but two state transportation cabinet employees invited to testify are not there. Attorneys for the Bevin administration sent committee chair State Representative Jim Wayne a letter refusing to make those state employees available. House Speaker Greg Stumbo appointed the commission to investigate whether the governor delayed a road project in Jessamine County as a political vendetta. Now better get your bets in this weekend, the next day or two, the Keeneland Fall Meet is almost over. It has just flown by this time. It wraps up tomorrow with the Halloween edition of Sunrise Trackside. There will be 10 races, including the $200,000 Hagyard Fayette. Racing begins at 105 both today and tomorrow. All right, get out there while you can. And it is time for trick or treating, but millions of kids are unable to eat the candy they pick on Halloween. Or on the campaign for allergy awareness, coming up at 12:30. Kids will be all over the place as we head towards your weekend for some of these trunk or treats, and also on Monday for Halloween. I'm going to talk all about that forecast and show you what you can expect. That's coming up next. Let's go! Come on! It's time for new beginnings. Thank you. New adventures. New inspiration. It's time for life in the adventurous Toyota RAV4. Now through October 31st, get zero for 60 financing on the last of the 2016 RAV4s. Get up to $750 customer cash or leases starting at $199 a month. Toyota, let's go places. Would you say no to a lot more money? Yes! You just won a million dollars. No thanks. Nice balloons though. Or no to more vacation days? Janet, I'm giving you an extra week's vacation. Oh, uh, no. What? No way. Who says no to more? Time Warner Cable's all about giving you more. 
like the most free HD channels and virtually unlimited movies and shows on demand so you can binge all day. Call 1-844-639-8828. And don't forget the free TV app. Get ultra-fast internet with secure home Wi-Fi to connect all your devices. Saving on mobile data fees helps big time. Switch to Time Warner Cable. For $89.99 a month, you'll get free HD channels, 100 meg internet, and unlimited calling to half the world. We can call Anne Rose as much as we want now. Switching is easy. Get our exclusive one-hour arrival window, a money-back guarantee with no contract to sign. Plus, get free installation, TV equipment, and epics included. Really? Honest. No. Say yes to more. Call now. Make the short drive to Gates Nissan in Richmond. Right now, get 0%, 60, and 72-month financing on new 2016 Nissans. At Gates Nissan in Richmond, we sell new Nissans for less because we can. Kentucky mornings start with Bill Bryant. Weekdays on WKYT This Morning. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're well, out there with 50s, lower 60s at this moment. It actually feels quite nice as you're walking outside, but it's still slightly, slightly on the cool side. But if you're under that sunshine, it actually feels pretty good. 60 degrees there in London, Corbin. I don't see any problems the rest of the day. We're sitting there in the mid 60s when we finish off. High school football, no issues. Might want to take that sweater just in case or that hoodie. And then we head off the night into tomorrow morning. Looks pretty good. 5Ks going on. Any yard sales, no problems. And actually doesn't feel too bad at 52 degrees. By 1 p.m. tomorrow, you're talking low 70s. That means mid 70s for highs. On your Saturday, the Thriller Parade will be perfect. 8 p.m. is when the parade starts. Thriller actually kicks off at 8.30. Sunday looking just fine. We're talking mid 70s, and then we go off into Monday, Halloween, and check this out. You're talking 79 degrees for a high. Now remember, back in 1950, we actually hit a record high at 82 degrees. So we could be tying or breaking a 66-year-old record at 80 degrees, 82 degrees. We'll see if we'll actually reach that, but nonetheless, it will be warm. That means trick-or-treating is going to be feeling pretty nice, and it looks like we're going to be looking at uh, those temperatures, not just for trick-or-treating sitting there pretty nice, but a couple days after that too, guys. It looks good. It feels great. No problems until next Thursday when we bring rain chances in the forecast. That's a long ways away. So really? Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, All right, we will. And we're coming back on WKYT. Coach Cal says it's time to make some improvements. And Mark Stoops and company could take a big step towards the post season. Dave Baker has sports next. And we'll check stocks as we head into afternoon trading and all of the major market indicators are climbing. Some teams play fast, and then there's Missouri, who will welcome the Cats for a noon kickoff tomorrow in Columbia. Twice this season, Mizzou has run more than 100 offensive plays in a game. Of course, the Tigers have lost both of those contests. Despite that, you don't want to take chances, and that means ball control for the Cats will be crucial. I think it's very important. Um, I think if you ask Missouri, it's, it's not as important to them because uh, they know they go, you know they go fast, so they're not worried about... Uh, you know, winning that battle. They're worried about getting their snaps and a lot of plays and getting you off balance. Um, but for us, it is important um, to have some possessions, to have some drives. And, you know, we're not going to, I told them the other day and told them every day that we're not going to handcuff them by any stretch. So it's the Cats and the Tigers from Columbia kickoff set noon tomorrow on the SEC Network. Yesterday, John Calipari met the media before Sunday's exhibition opener against Clarion, and not surprisingly, he talked about the athletics expansion that's taking place all over campus. You know, obviously, uh, I'm so happy for baseball. I'm happy for football. Anybody that's worked with me, uh, the, when, when they make a commitment to soccer, women's soccer, uh, what they've done for track, and, and, and when you do those kind of investments, in my mind, which works different, you're doing it for the kids, and I'm good. I'm never going to. They're doing it for the kids, doing it for those players. You're doing it for both men and women. I am ecstatic. All right, now it's our turn. Yeah, that's exactly right. It'll be interesting to see what he wants to do to keep the Wildcats, as he says, at the gold standard in every aspect of the program. Cats in the exhibition opener, Sunday night, 7 o'clock on the SEC Network. 
Coming up tonight on the Big Blue Insider, Ryan Lemon is sitting in for Dick Gabriel, a preview of Kentucky and Missouri and more. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. We'll see you back here at 630 for the WKYT News on the CW Lexington at 630. And again, we've got WKYT game time. Great night of high school football action tonight at 11. All of that to kick off a busy weekend, guys. But for now, that's a look at sports on this Friday. Thank right, you. Thank yeah, you. A great weekend of sports. <laughs> this is so much going on. You know, it's going to be a, an interesting weekend for sure. And it's good to have you with us on WKYT News here on this Friday. There's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at noon. Millions of children are unable to eat the candy that they pick up on Halloween. We'll have more on the campaign for allergy awareness. That's ahead. Plus, the Lexington Police Chief, the Lexington Fire Chief, and the Fayette County Sheriff all came together today to talk about crime here in Lexington. I'll share what they had to say coming up. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $35 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is $180 million.